Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Multiplying Mixed Numbers. This is part one. So there's two goals I have in this lesson. By the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to multiply mixed numbers together and calculate the answer and to know exactly how to do it without any errors so you know how to get to the answer. The number two goal is to understand what it means to actually multiply mixed numbers together. So to get the answer is one thing. To understand how and why and what that actual answer represents, that is goal number two. So that's what we're going to conquer in this lesson. So for the first problem, to illustrate this, we're going to take the fraction 1 half and we're going to multiply it by the mixed number 1 and 1 half. Now, what does it mean to multiply by a mixed number? What it means is we take the, what we are given to start with 1 half, and then we're going to multiply it by whatever we are given right here. So to recall, 1 half is a uh, half of a pizza, that's what this represents, and we're multiplying by 1 and a half. So we're multiplying, I'll put a little dot here between, so we're multiplying the 1 half times 1 whole plus another half. So let me ask you a question. What if we were just taking 1 half times 1? Forget about the half. 1 half times 1, you would get an answer of, of 1 half because we're just starting with what we have, multiplying by 1, and you would have 1 half left over. But we're not multiplying by 1, we're multiplying by 1 and a half. So that means that we're going to take what we start with, we clone it to get 1 half over here at the end because that's times 1, but then we're also taking another half uh, to get uh, the final answer there. Uh, so how do we actually calculate the answer? Let's get the answer and then let's figure out how it all makes sense in terms of magnets. What we're going to do first, let me rewrite the problem down below here, the one half times one and a half. I want to convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions because we already know how to multiply improper fractions. You multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So everything is going to be much simpler if you just take any mixed number you see and change it to improper. How do you do that? You multiply two times one is two, plus one more is three, that goes on the top, and then the two, the denominator, just comes down to the answer. So what we're saying is that the mixed number one and a half is the same as the improper fraction three halves. So this problem here, where we're taking one half of a pizza times one and a half, we're taking one half and we're multiplying by one and a half, we're saying that that is exactly the same as one half times three halves. So let me show you what that would look like here. Three halves is the same. This is one half, this is two halves, this is three halves. If you put them together, I think you could convince yourself that one and a half is exactly the same as one, two, three halves. So by multiplying it this way, we're multiplying exactly the same amount of stuff, but we're doing it this way, which means that we can get the answer a little simpler because we know to get the answer, we do one times three is three and two times two is four. So we're saying the answer is 3 4. So this original fraction here, the answer here, I'll put it over here, put a gigantic equal sign here, 3 4. So I can circle it here or I can circle it here. Either way, we multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms, we get an answer of 3 4. Now let's see if we can understand this. 3 4 is there's 1 4, 2 4, 3 4. Why is it? that when we take 1 half times this, we get 3 fourths. It's because when we multiply this times 1 and a half, first we multiply by the 1, which would give us 1 half, but then we have to take half again of what we have here, half again because of this, which is another fourth. So I guess it's going to make a little more sense if I can maybe put it like this. Maybe like this. So if we take this half times 1, we get half over here. This is a half, but it represented in terms of fourths. And then we take this half and we multiply by a half. So we cut it in half again, we get the other fourth over here. So when you multiply by one and a half, what you do is you take the original fraction, you first multiply it by one. So you're going to get a half, which is represented over here. Then, because you're multiplying by one and a half, you separately multiply it by a half, which means you cut it in half, you take this, and you also put it in the answer. So there's almost like two multiplications happening. You take and multiply by one, and then you take and multiply by a half. When you take this and multiply by one, you get a half, which is this half here. When you take and multiply by a half, you cut it in half and you get this extra fourth. So the answer would be three fourths. So it's a half plus the other fourth is three fourths there. So multiplying by mixed numbers, that's what it actually means visually. But what we're going to do in practice is convert all of them to improper fractions. So let's take a look at one third times one and three fourths. 
So before we do anything else, let's just talk through what does it mean? It means we take this and we multiply by one. Okay, then we get a one third over there. Then we take this and multiply it separately by three fourths. Whatever fraction we get, we tack on to the final answer and we put it all together and that is what we get. All right, so let's change the problem. One third times, how do we convert this to improper? One times four is four and then we have four plus three is seven. So it's seven fourths. So this problem, one third times this mixed number is the same thing as multiplying by the fraction seven fourths. And we're gonna multiply the improper fraction version of things. One times seven is seven and three times four is 12. And so the answer to the problem is seven twelfths. That's the final answer. So you see for every problem, we're just gonna change that mixed number to improper. And then we already know how to multiply any improper fractions together. Let's take a look at three fourths multiplied by one and one third. So again, you can think of it as three fourths times one, you're gonna get three fourths over there. Then take that three fourths times a third, whatever fraction you get from that, you can tack on to the final answer. So you could do it that way, but it's gonna be much easier just to take this and convert any mixed numbers to improper. Three times one is three, one more is four thirds. And then we know how to multiply these. So we just multiply them. Three times four is 12 and four times three is also 12, and then 12 divided by 12 is just one. So we actually get a whole number of one in that case. It's much easier to convert and multiply rather than having to take this times one and get something and then take this times a third and get something and put them all together and, and figure all that out. It's much easier to do it this way. So that's how we're going to tackle all of them. Next problem, two thirds times one and two thirds. So again, the longer way to think about it is we'll just take this two thirds times one and we'll get two thirds. Then we'll take this two thirds times another two thirds, we'll get some fractional answer, we'll put it together with what we got to begin with and assemble the answer. But actually, it's much simpler just to take this mixed number, convert it. Three times one is three, two more is five thirds because of the three on the bottom. Then we multiply two times five is 10 and three times three is nine. So here we actually did get an improper fraction. We wanna convert this. Nine times one is nine, so it only goes one time. There's a remainder 10 minus nine of one, remainder of one out of nine. So the answer, you can write it as one and one ninth, or you can write the answer as 10 ninths. Either way is fine with me. All right, let's take a look at problem number five. What about one and one fifth? And we're gonna multiply it by one and one third. So in all the previous problems, it's been fraction times mixed number. Fraction times mixed number, fraction times mixed number. Here's the first time where we have a fraction, I'm sorry, a mixed number times a mixed number. So what it's basically saying is something a little bit larger than one, one and one fifth times something again, a little bit larger than one, one and one third. So there is a way to do it in the long form way, but see how it gets complicated. You'd have to take the one and one fifth times one and then the one and one fifth times the one third, it would be messy. This way, we're going to convert each of them. Five times one is five, one more is six, fifths out of five here. Multiply, convert, three times one is three, one more is four. Again, out of three because of the three here. Now I have two regular improper fractions that I know how to multiply. Six times four, 24, five times three, 15. So I have an improper fraction, 24 fifteenths. Let me see if I can simplify this. 24 fifteenths. I think I can simplify it because I can divide this by three and I can divide this by three. 24 divided by three is eight and 15 divided by three is five. So eight fifths is a perfectly fine improper fraction to write the answer as, but we wanna generally convert to mixed number. Five times one is five. It only goes one time, a leftover, eight minus five, the leftover the remainder is three and it's in terms of fifths. So one and three fifths is exactly the same thing as eight fifths. I know it looks a little weird to convert and do it all like this, but it's much faster to do it that way than to try to multiply these mixed numbers in a longer form way, as I've been describing. And you'll get the answer every time, 100% correct. All right, let's take a look at one and one sixth, and we're gonna multiply that by one and three fourths. So again, instead of trying to figure out how to multiply the mixed numbers with the whole and the fractional part, we'll convert. Six times one is six, one more is seven. Six, the six comes down. Then one times four is four. The four plus three is seven. 
this one's out of four. Now I multiply these and it's very simple to do because seven times seven on the top is 49 and six times four is 24 on the bottom. So I have 20, I'm sorry, 49 20 fourths. So I wanna to convert to a mixed number, but these are larger. So I probably need to go ahead and do the division, the long form division here. So let me go off to the side. I'll take 49, I'll divide it by 24. All right, so can it go one or two times? It can actually go two times. Two times 24 is gonna be 48. You can say two times two is four, two times four is eight, 48. Subtract and you get a one, the remainder is one. So what we have figured out is that when you do this division, it goes two whole times with a remainder of one out of 20 fourths. So one, or two and one 20 fourths, or 49 20 fourths, same exact thing. These are the same way of writing the same thing. All right, I think we only have two more. Let's take a look. Two and a half multiplied by one and five six. Again, you could figure out how to do this long form, but with the fractions, it's gonna be tricky. Let's change it to improper. Two times two is four. One more is five halves because of the two here. Then six times one is six, and the six plus five is 11, and it's out of sixth here because of this. Now we just multiply the numerators. Five times 11 is 55, and two times six is 12. So we have 55 twelfths. We can circle this as our final answer, but we want to also convert it to a mixed number. So let's go over here to the side and let's take 55 and let's divide it by 12. So 12 times five is 60, so that's too high. So it has to be 12 times four. 12 times four is 48. Now you can borrow if you want, or you can just count up from 48. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. So the remainder is seven. So what it means when you do this division is it goes four whole times with a remainder of seven and it's out of twelfths, four and seven twelfths. And that's the final answer. All right, we have one more problem and I think I'm gonna find room for it over here. Let's take a look at our final problem. Let's say it's two and a half and we're gonna multiply that by one and three fourths. So again, let's convert. The two and a half is two times two is four, one more is five halves. And then this one is one times four is four, four plus three is seven fourths. And we multiply five times seven, 35, and two times four is eight. So we have 35 eighths. That's an improper fraction. It's perfectly fine to circle it. Or we can just try to uh, convert to a mixed number. Now I think we can do this in our head. Eight times five is 40, that's too high. Eight times four, is what, 32. So it can go four times, eight times four is 32, the remainder 35 minus 32 is three out of eights. Four and three eights, that's the final answer. All right, so in this lesson, we have learned how to multiply mixed numbers together. Now, mechanically, what you do is you change all of the mixed numbers into fractions, improper fractions, and we already know how to do that. So essentially we have one extra step and then the rest of the problem flows exactly as we have already learned. So that's great because we already know how to do it. Now conceptually what it means is you take what you start, what you are given, and you're still multiplying by a fraction. It just means this is something bigger than one. So you can think of taking that one half and multiplying by one, and then also taking that one half and multiplying by a half because this is one and a half. Multiply by one, multiply by a half, and so then you can assemble it all together and you'll get this half and this quarter, which makes three quarters. That's what we're doing for all of these uh, uh, problems. We multiply by mixed number, that's what you're doing. But by changing to improper and getting the answer, you're gonna get the answer mechanically every problem in your, every, every time, and you're always going to get the correct answer. So I'd like you to practice doing it this way, and then follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice with multiplying mixed numbers.